every day we hear about global problems and crises and catastrophes. The burning of the Amazon, the melting of the Arctic, or the recent horrible suicide attacks in Kabul. I am here to convince you that we already have many of the solutions that we need to address those crises. And I take my confidence in stating that from this report that I've been reading on my way from Stockholm here to Dresden this morning. Uh, not, not all of it, but I... <laughs> I had been doing some homework before, and I uh, have a little bit more to do still. This is a report about the best nominations that we have received for the Right Livelihood Award this year, the so-called Alternative Nobel Prize. The most interesting ones we go and visit in their home countries, and there's a lot of research and a lot of filtering of information that in the end leads to the ones that we present to our international jury, and this just becomes thicker and thicker from year to year. And what is special about our nomination process is that it's completely open. Everyone in the world can send us nominations for this award. Now, the ones that are contained in here are confidential, and I cannot tell you those exact stories. But we have, over the years since 1980, been giving four awards every year to all the hopeful and courageous projects that we find in the nominations we receive from around the world every year. And I want to talk to you about some of those who've received the award to convince you that we do have concrete solutions to urgent global challenges. Medellin in Colombia was in the 1990s one of the most violent cities in the world. And in this situation of car bombs and gang warfare, uh, drug trafficking, civil war, a group of poets called people to come to the streets for poetry readings. They've been organizing poetry readings in the parks, as you see here, in subway stations, in schools. And this has become one of the most beloved poetry festivals of the world. And it has made a great contribution for the reclaiming of public space in the city of Medellin. So the experience of Medellin holds all the solutions for how you can make a violent city less violent. Egypt is a country with great problems when it comes to gender equality and women's rights. Mozan Hassan received our award in 2016 for the work that she does for the rights of women, protecting and giving legal help to victims of abuse, running a training for women who are running for public office, and actually achieving the inclusion of women's rights into the Egyptian constitution. Even though the work of Mozan Hassan is, of course, not supported by the government in Egypt, and there's a lot of resistance against her, she cannot even leave her country, what she's done holds all the solutions to a better situation for women's rights in Egypt. We have a global water crisis of huge dimensions. More than two billion people do not have safe drinking water. This is a situation that is getting worse because of pollution, because of climate change, and because of privatization of water resources. Maud Barlow from Canada was the first one who really brought this issue to global attention when she wrote the book Blue Gold in 2005. And in 2010, she was an advisor to the UN General Assembly and made sure that the human right to water was made an official UN policy by a resolution adopted by the General Assembly. Her work holds all the solutions for how we can deal with the global water crisis. 
Afghanistan ranks 168 on the Human Development Index out of some 190 countries. It's a country where the average school attendance is below four years. Sima Sama has been a champion of education for girls, of health, of human rights in Afghanistan. She was the first minister for women's affairs in the government in Kabul after the 2001 war, and she became the chairwoman of the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission. She travels around the world telling world leaders that another Afghanistan is possible, and her work has developed the blueprint for how Afghanistan could be a prosperous and peaceful country. This is a picture from Niger, from the Sahel region, which experienced an enormous environmental catastrophe from the 1950s onwards of deforestation and desertification. There were lots of development organizations coming in from northern countries, and one of the development experts who came from Australia in the late 70s was Tony Rinaldo. They were all planting trees as best as they could, and they saw all these tree planting projects fail. And in desperation, at some point in the early 80s, when the tree planting was failing, the trees they had planted died again, Tony was directing his attention to these bushes that already exist in the Sahel. And he realized that by working with these bushes, you can achieve reforestation, which is what he received the 2018 Right Livelihood Award for. Because these bushes already have a root system in the ground, and by taking proper care of them, and by working with people to integrate into their farming methods that they mark those bushes that they want to grow into trees, you, receive, uh, you achieve a revolution where in Niger alone 200 million trees grow up in the course of 20 years at a cost much lower than the tree planting because this is done by farmers themselves. And thanks to the award, his work is now spreading globally there's a global evergreening alliance which will present these methods in New York at the end of September at the Climate Summit because it is a solution both for food security and for climate change. After doing this work for 40 years, this is what the world looks like for us. A world map of opportunity, of solutions, of hope. And this is the one thing that I want all of you to take home with you. The question, what does your map look like, of your community, of your work, of your field of interest, if you look at the already existing solutions and if you map them out. Because by doing so, you achieve a very important change of perspective. You realize that we have solutions, but it, the lack, the problem is the lack of implementation. And for us, after you know, having been founded 40 years ago as an award, this insight meant that we have to be more than just an award. We have to keep supporting the ones who've received the award. This gentleman from the Democratic Republic of Congo is Dennis Mukwege, a surgeon who has been working for the women in Eastern Congo and beyond, who've been victims of sexualized violence. He received the Right Livelihood Award in 2013 and the Nobel Peace Prize last year. He is really under threat because of the work that he is doing. And over years and years, the Right Livelihood Award Foundation, with the help of a German foundation, has been funding the security for him and his staff at the Pansy Hospital, together with other actors. And we have many of our laureates who need this kind of protection support. And we do so by funding bodyguards or by sending solidarity missions to highlight their situation in their countries. Another thing that we do is to make sure that the voice of our laureates is heard at the United Nations. Four years ago, we started an office at the UN in Geneva. And this is a picture from the 
UN Human Rights Council. And the lady you see on the screen is our laureate from Azerbaijan, who is not allowed to leave her country because she's been working as a critical journalist um, writing about the corruption of the ruling elite. And while she's not allowed to leave Azerbaijan, we can bring her to the United Nations where all the country delegations see her on screen because last year we got a consultative status with the United Nations. And this is part of the work that we do to spread actively the work of laureates, even those who received the award long ago. So we're now at this very critical juncture in human history, a juncture where we see that there's enormous challenges ahead. And on the other hand, we see that the solutions exist. What we do as Right Livelihood Award is to highlight four of them every year with the awards that we give, not as solitary heroes, but as examples of what the human spirit can do, as examples of what is possible. And it's a process, as I said in the beginning, that we can't do alone. We need everyone to participate in it. Everybody can send us nominations. And please think if there's someone that you would like to make a nomination for, for the 2020 awards. For the 2019 ones, I'm uh, picking up my little booklet again. We have our jury meeting in one week from now where we'll be sitting with jury members from around the world and have the very hard task to select four of these to give an award to. And we'll be presenting these four at the Foreign Office in Stockholm on the 25th of September. And we're sure that it will hit the news even in Germany and you'll find us on the internet and please help us spread these messages so that we don't need to live with problems that we know we can solve. Thank you.